Okay, so seismic waves. Seismic waves are waves that come from earthquakes. Whenever you say the word seismic, it means dealing with earthquakes. A seismologist is someone who studies earthquakes. And these waves given off by the earthquake, there's essentially two types of waves. Waves that travel on the surface, which we call the surface waves, that makes sense. And then waves that travel through the body of the earth, so we call those the body waves. The surface waves, the ones that travel on the surface, the ones that knock over buildings, the ones that give us the damage that we associate with earthquakes. We see these buildings that are knocked over caused by the, the surface waves. Damage that we would that we usually see in these pictures all caused by the surface waves coming from an earthquake. The body waves that we're going to focus on today are the ones that travel through the earth. Not on the surface, but you can see a tremendous amount of destruction caused by these surface waves. So if we had a diagram of the Earth, there's the Earth, a little cross-section of the Earth. If an earthquake happened right here, the surface waves travel along the surface, and the body waves uh, travel through the Earth. They're going through the Earth. If we had a station, a seismograph station over here on this side, we would feel the body waves first. They travel right through the earth before the surface waves would have time to travel all the way around. We would get those body waves first. There are two types of body waves. We're going to focus on these two types. The two types of body waves are the P wave or the primary wave. And the other one is the secondary wave, the S wave. Uh, the main difference is how they move. The, the P waves and the S waves move differently. So we have these two types of body waves, the ones that travel through the Earth. Pr primary waves are, uh, again, also called the P wave. And the primary waves are compressional waves. They, they travel by uh, the material pushing against e each other. The secondary waves, the S waves, are shear or transverse waves. Now, because they travel in these, these methods, it makes the P waves, since they're compressional, they're a lot faster. Uh, of the two waves, of these two waves, of any seismic wave, these are the fastest waves, the P waves, where the S waves are the slower ones. And I don't mean to put down the S waves. When I say slower, we're talking about traveling at uh, 10, 12,000 miles an hour, where the P wave up to 21,000 miles an hour. So they're a lot faster uh, comparative to each other. You know, P waves fast, S waves, secondary waves are slower. I guess that uh, may, makes sense. And, and then they also, what they travel through, let's take a look at how they travel. So here we see on, on the left, we see uh, P waves and how the P waves move across, uh, how the wave is propagated and moves across that diagram. And the S waves, we see that the motion is up and down or transverse the direction or the motion of the wave. So P waves over here on, on the left hand side, here's how P waves move. And over here is how the S waves move. We could also look at uh, this. You can see that on the as the wave moves from the left to the right, it's moving by pushing. And we can see that although the material moves slightly, the wave propagates or moves from one end all the way across to the other. And there's just a little bit of motion in the material, where the S wave, on the other hand, gives us something a little bit more of a up and down motion. All right? And so that's how that S wave travels across. So the P wave is a wave that moves by pushing back and forth. So here's an example of a P wave. All right? Again, there's the P wave. And then the S wave travels a little bit more. Oh, there's the P wave. Here we come. Here, there's the S wave moves up and down. If you stare at that for a little while, you probably get dizzy. And and because of how they move, the P wave is able to able to travel through all sorts of materials. It's able to tra It's able to travel through uh, solids, liquids and gases where the s wave because of the way it travels is limited it's only able to travel through solids only 
So it's limited in that. And we're going to see how later on that's going to help us learn a little bit about what's going on inside the earth. All right. So if I'm at a, uh, a station, if I'm at a seismograph station and, and a seismograph, a seismograph is the machine that, that does the shaking. It, it can sense and, and feel the P waves and the S waves and gives us that little shake. Once that happens, the, uh, again, they, they can have multi-dimensional, multi-directional. They, they shake different ways. They, they detect the P waves and the S waves. So here you see just a nice little chart that shows us the difference that we just talked about. P waves, primary waves, secondary waves. And when we see a seismograph, the first shake that we see is the P wave. The second shake that we see, the big uh, shake up and down, is the S wave. So here, here's a seismogram, nothing happens. The first shaking that happens lets us know that there was an earthquake, that's the P wave that got there first. And then the second big shake that gets there, that's our S wave. And we could label it say, all right, here, right here is the P wave. That's the one that got there first. Right here is the S wave. And that got there after the fact. And the difference between the two, the time difference. So here's the P wave. Here's the S wave. We're really going to be concerned about this right here, the time difference between the P wave and the S wave. And that's going to help us learn about where the earthquake is. So if we look at this one right here, and let's draw another one. So I have another station somewhere else. Uh, it's there. And then the P wave starts to shake. And then a little while later, the S wave starts to shake. And you'll notice there's a bit of a difference here between when the P wave got there. So again, uh, the P wave is that first shake. S wave is that second shake that happens right there. <clears throat> but now we look at the difference between the P wave and the S wave. And it's a much shorter difference. The, the, the time between the P wave arrival and the S wave arrival is a lot different. Uh, is a lot shorter in, in that second case. And this is similar to you and I maybe having a, a race. So let's say we're uh, standing at the starting line of, of a race, uh, and then we're going to have a mile long. We're going to run a mile. Let's say we get to here. This is a, a quarter mile. And when we get to that quarter mile, you're able to run that quarter mile in one minute. Very, very impressive. Nice job. Yet me, on the other hand, when I run, that's going to take me twice as long. It takes me two minutes. So you're beating me by one minute, right? The time difference beating me by a, a minute. And when we get to that half mile mark, all right, now you're going to get to that half mile mark. Assume you have that same speed. You get there in two minutes, where for me, it's going to take me a while. I'm not going to get there to that half mile mark until four minutes. And you see that now our time difference is, is increasing, all right? We're increasing our time difference. We go all the way to three quarters of a mile. All right, we're out here at three quarters of a mile. And again, you are going to get there pretty quick. You're going to get there in three minutes. Where me, it's going to take me a little while to get there. I'm not going to get there for six minutes. And the key, the thing that we really want to focus on is the time difference. And notice that the further we go, the time difference or the change increases. So at the first quarter mile, when we were still pretty close, there was only a one minute difference, all right? Delta difference, the change. At the half mile mark, now our changes, our difference is two minutes. And as we continue to go, we go even further to the three quarters mile, now our change is a three minute difference. And we can continue this on and on and on. We can run a couple miles. Now, I'll get tired, but you, you'll continue to beat me. And the further we run, the greater the difference is in our time. So we can go back to these two uh, seismograms Sorry, right here. We can go back to these two seismograms. And we can tell that uh, seismogram A, this first one right over here, we'll call this seismogram A right here and seismogram B. We can tell that seismogram A is further away from the earthquake because there's a greater time difference between the P wave and the S wave. Just like if we looked at someone who was just standing on the track and they saw you run by and they didn't see me run by for two minutes after, right? So let's say that person was standing here and they're watching, they saw you run by, I didn't run by for, for two minutes after, they knew that we're probably a lot further away than if they were standing here and they saw you run by and I was only a minute behind you, all right? I was closer, we could see that Station A, the, the, seismic, the seismograph that recorded this seismogram, when it recorded this, there was a greater difference between P wave and S wave. And let's say maybe this was a uh, five minute difference, all right, as opposed to station B, where maybe there was only a one minute difference. So I could tell that station A is 
further away from the earthquake. Station B is closer to the earthquake because the P wave and the S wave were closer together. On page 11 of your reference tables, there's this chart right here. This chart is a chart that shows you, of your earth science reference tables, that shows you how fast P waves and S waves go, and more importantly, their relationship between each other. So let me give you an example. Let's say we um, go back to that seismogram that we just looked at. Great, and here is over on the left-hand side. We had a five-minute difference between the P wave and the S wave. So if we can find out where on this chart the P wave and the S wave are five minutes apart from each other, we can find out how far away the earthquake is. So if we look at this chart, the X axis says epicenter distance. So that's how far away the earthquake is. The epicenter is the place where the earthquake happened. So epicenter distance, the distance, how far away the earthquake happened. The Y axis is travel time. So these numbers along the side represent minutes, the amount of time it took the P wave and the S wave to travel there. So what we want to do is we want to find out where is the difference between the P wave and the S wave five minutes. To do that, we're going to grab ourselves a, a little piece of paper and just, uh, I, here's the, this is going to be my little piece of paper that I'm going to use. Uh, you just grab a piece of scrap paper, whatever you want, and we're going to put that over on the side and we're going to put some marks on here to represent the seismograph. So we're going to put a mark here at zero and then another one at the five minute mark. So there's five minutes right there. So that zero actually represents the P wave when the P wave got there and five minutes later the s wave got there so i got one line that represents the p wave and one line that represents the s wave now my next step is, is simply to take this piece of paper and i'm just going to slide it until the p wave and the s wave match up so, right, so I, I want the line for the p wave to match up with the p line and the line for the s wave to match up with the s line let's find out where that is no not there how about right there? That's close. Close. That's maybe a little bit too much. Let's go back right about there. Uh, that, that's, there we go. If we look at it right there, that's where they, come on, stay right there. That's good. No, come on, back over here. There we go. They're, they're lined up right there. So that helps me find out where the distance is. That's where the P wave and the S wave are five minutes apart. Nowhere on this chart are the S wave and the P wave five minutes apart. If we head over this way on the chart, they're a lot closer. All right, let's, let's zoom in on this a little bit more. So, so this three right here isn't three, it's actually three times 10 to the third kilometers, times 10 to the third, 10 times 10 times 10 is 1,000. All right, so this right here is 1,000. So it's 3,000 kilometers here. This is 4,000 kilometers right there. So the earthquake we just figured out, which is at that spot, would be 3,500, halfway in between, kilometers away from that station, 3,500 kilometers away from this station over here since there was a five minute difference. So a quick repeat, just a little piece of paper here. We looked at the time difference between the P wave and the S wave was five minutes. We marked that on our paper that there was a five minute difference there. And then we just slid that, excuse me, then we just slid that piece of paper up to find out where that five minute difference matched, follow that down to the X axis and we'll get our distance to the epicenter. So there should be some, we should do some practice with this page 11. If you get a lot better, if you do a lot of practice with it. And the next video has a, about a dozen or so questions that you can practice using this chart.